friends, this is floss tube and variety show number 120 something, 121 maybe. Um, yes, 121. I don't know. You'll have seen a little screen on the front. Uh, this is, I'm Emily Williams in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. And I'm gonna give you a weather report to start off with. So we are under a tornado warning, which doesn't mean what it used to mean. It used to mean a tornado has been sighted. It now means the conditions are right for tomato, tornado, tomatoes, <laughs> tomatoes to form. Um, tornadoes. And we're supposed to take shelter immediately, but we're under a tomato, wow, <laughs> tornado watch until 6 p.m. and I'm not going to take shelter as often as they give a warning, I don't think. Uh, that's one thing, and it's raining, and you can sort of see out the window, it's cloudy. I mean, obviously if it's raining, it's cloudy. Um, and this is gonna be a very short video because our power has been flickering, which doesn't affect my phone, which of course is charged, but it affects my ability to upload and it affects possibly other things. So it's gonna be very, very short, but I didn't wanna not um, step in today because I do have a couple things to show, like two things and neither of them is an active whip. I'll show one, I'll show, I'll show three things. Also the description field is gonna be probably incomplete because I'm gonna to try to be um, quick. So, la la la, floss tube means cross stitch. V variety show normally means something else. In my variety show sections, I often talk about books or games or family stories or Legos or something. But today, I don't know what the variety show will be. Maybe you're getting it right now. Anyway, let's talk slightly about cross stitch. So the things that I can just step in to show you are, I have two finished, fully finished objects. So the first one I'll show is this cunning Biscornu. I finished the Biscornu. This was Simone's Biscornu from Simone Smalls, which I had finished the stitching a few weeks ago. This is 37 count Russian tea cake by Legacy Linen. And it's uh, a red floss, very slightly variegated from um, Roxy Floss Co. And I just think it's gorgeous. Now it was very fiddly to do the stitching, especially the final bit of the seam. And part of this is because Simone in her instructions called for 32 count linen, and I did it on 37 count, so it's a little smaller. But I think that this kind of thing would be fiddly anyway um, to finish. But I happen to have a couple of moderately old buttons. I don't know if you call them antique. I'm gonna get, they were in my mother's stuff, so I'm gonna guess they are from the 70s. So maybe they're 50 years old. Anyway, darling. Now, Cindy, as you if you watch the Galloping Horse video a few weeks ago, we showed, Cindy showed her Biscornu that she made and she put beads all along the edge, which was really pretty. Now, Simone doesn't call for that. It's not really traditional um, to put beads on there, but it was very, very lovely finish, so. I might look for some, I don't know, maybe clear beads. I don't know, probably I won't do anything because that's an extra step. I'd rather think of it as done. And then the other thing I fully finished is I finished this. This is the Cuckoo Sampler by, um, and we're getting alerts, more alerts. Um, Cuckoo Sampler by I don't remember. I'll put it in the description field. If It might come to my mind. Anyway, I finished this last year. You see the date on it is 2023. 
This is on uh, Red Cedar 20 count Ada by Cedar River Linen and Designs and I did it in Ecru. I think it's one strand, pretty sure, one strand over one Ada square. And this is Lady Dot Creates Chenille that Leslie gave me. And this is the backing fabric that I chose. I'm really pleased. Now the backing fabric technically has a little red in it as opposed to this orangey, earthy red of the red cedar color, but I think it's fine. Because of the chenille, you actually don't see them exactly next to each other and it's a tiny bit of red and who cares? I think it turned out fine. This one is stuffed with walnut shells and it's nice to feel. This, the pattern call for wool roving to stuff it, I don't have any. I don't have a place to easily get it. So I just use fiber fill. And even though the fiber fill these days is extremely springy and huge, I mean, it's powerful. It uh, has a lot of resilience to it. It took a huge amount, an amazing amount of fiber fill to fill this little thing. And it's still squishy. It's not as if I filled it and it's about to explode. So these little pins, can you see those? Those are, they were in a little sewing kit that, now of course I don't remember her name, but it was somebody at the Great Bridge Sampler Weekend. It was the Smalls Exchange um, thing, and that was the small that I picked out. So the one cross stitch I'm gonna show you because it's in my reach is under the roof of blue Ionian weather, if you can believe that that's the one I would show. I've done about 600 stitches since the last time you saw this, and almost all of it is in here. You can see, I think the last time I showed it, you could begin to see the outline of this arch. Let me get the, the uh, picture. So this is the whole thing, and I'm over working over here. Here's this arch, the outline of the arch. So I'm working in this, part of the of the arch. So I'm about to get to that big water stain. You know, it's beginning to show there, but that's what I've been doing. Here's the, I'm not gonna take it out of the hoop because I'm in process and because I wasn't gonna make a long video. And of course, as we've been talking, the wind has died down, it stopped raining. We are under a tornado warning until 1130 though, which it's 1120 now. So anyway, um, Variety Show. Uh, this is of course earlier in the day that I normally make a video. Part of that is because of wanting to, I don't know, do it before the trees fall on the house, I suppose. But also because we're going to a birthday party this afternoon, a very good friend of ours and it's a surprise party, and I know 100% that she does not watch these videos. So I'm not worried about giving away the surprise. Um, she, they live about 90 minutes west of here, and they're getting worse storm than we are, and it's a surprise party. So we heard from her husband, if you don't wanna come, I totally understand. Um, let me know by noon. Well, that's 40 minutes from now. I said, we'll come unless a tree falls on our house or the roof gets ripped off. But on the other hand, if that happens, maybe we'll just pack our bags and stay with you. So, um, but I don't think that's gonna happen. And I think we're gonna be fine. So we're gonna have to leave. We're supposed to be there no later than five. And we're gonna allow close to two hours for that trip. Although I think the weather is going to calm down and it is likely that there won't be, there, won't, there will be no problem. So we'll see, we'll see what happens. Uh, we are giving her, it's funny, we're giving her, um, Byron, my husband likes to do origami and so he has in the past done origami for gifts to our nieces and nephews, origami with bills, because 
as he says, it's a gift card that's accepted anywhere and it never expires and never use it, loses its basic value. Um, so we're giving her an origami uh, six and zero because she's turning 60 and a birthday cake out of three $20 bills. So it becomes um, $60 a dollar a year. Boy, I am distracted. My problem is I haven't had my coffee yet. That's crazy, crazy talk. Okay, sorry, that was too soft. You probably couldn't hear it. It was nothing. It was babbling. All right, I am going to stop babbling. Uh, sorry for the short video. Those of you who are in the path of this storm as it has passed or as it's heading north of here, I hope that you will suffer no property or personal damage from it and that your loved ones will be safe as well. Our son and daughter-in-law live in eastern uh, Tennessee. They have no power, and there's a lot of flooding in the mountains, and they're in the mountains. But I don't think their property is flooded. Uh, it's fairly high-ish. I mean, you have to go up to get to their property for the most part. And um, Boone, though, the town of Boone, which is where Appalachian State is, is has some severe flooding I saw on television. So they have no, Scott and Natasha have no power. So we said, hey, you can come and stay with us this weekend, but they would have to cross the storm path to get to us and cross through the area that is flooding, has a lot of flooding. And probably the roads they would normally go on are not available to them. So I doubt they're gonna come. Uh, but, of course, they'd be welcome, and if they came, we would have a good time. And we have, you know, electricity at the moment, and a nice TV, and air conditioning, and laundry facilities, refrigerator, all those amenities that we can offer them if they would like to come and stay at our establishment. Okay, that's enough. Um, I will make a video next week, though we have... No, next weekend is not the huge weekend. Yeah, I'll have to, I'll, next week I will have made my, I've given my life some thought and figure out what the schedule will be going forward because the um, school, girl, school girl samplers of Western New York, Jane Boyer 1832 event that Leslie and I are putting on in Leroy, New York is the 19th of October, so for sure there will be not be a video on the 18th. Um, so, anyway. Babble, babble, babble. Thanks so much for tuning in. Many blessings, friends. Mm -hmm.